Okay, if you're watching this video from the beginning, which is where I'm planning to put this, what I'm doing today is dangerous, just like my previous video. I don't recommend you do this at home. If you are in need of doing this, contact a licensed electrician. Don't just go off and do it willy-nilly. Don't just simply copy me. It is dangerous. You could hurt yourself. It is also illegal within the borders of my country. I have no idea about yours. I'm making this clear that this is for educational purposes only. Anyway, let's get started. Today's video is going to try to recap from what I did last time, which was on these foot pedals. Now, I haven't gone ahead and done what I thought I should do, which was get the schematic out. And second, if you can hear a lot more traffic noises than normal, it's because I left my window open. I honestly have hard times trying to breathe sometimes, and it's just my asthma and hay fever sort of flaring up. So it's nothing new. Anyway. What I'll be doing is making these sort of safe, or at least better. Can't make them any... I'm just gonna do stuff with them today. All right, so what I'll be doing is I'll start off by explaining that these are two Chinese made uh, foot pedals. Oh no, this one's actually made in Taiwan. I wonder if it is, anyway. These are two modern replacement foot pedals for traditional sewing machines. Uh, this isn't going to fit every single machine, as I unfortunately found out, because I've got three sewing machines that need foot pedals, and these two aren't even going to fit. But today I intend to use this one, modify it to a point to make it safe so I don't accidentally screw around with it and any modifications I'll have to make later on, well, that's gonna be down the track. But this one is effectively gonna be put in a project pile of, if I need something for a foot pedal, that's what this is. This one I am gonna keep as is. Uh, at some point I'm gonna tear it down and document the PCB inside to try to understand what it is and what I can use it for. Sorry, this is just, maybe remake the PCB, try to understand the circuitry. And this is the original one, which I'll need today for helping me with this. So to begin with, let's try to deal with the American one. Start off with, I'm going to lob off the power cord, the power point plug, like that. Second, I'm gonna lob this off. And this is actually copper wire by the looks of things, that's good. The reason I'm doing this is that this is not useful to me. This won't plug into the machine that I need it for, so there's no point. So when I separate this, I should have two cables. Just a sec. I keep forgetting things, I forgot to grab my screwdriver. So I'm going to open this by first popping that out. Spring doesn't pop anywhere. So inside I don't need to do anything. I will however take a piece of wire to stick in here. So let's go with that long. What this will be for later on is modifying um, the foot pedal. So let's take a quick look. Uh, the two pins for this switch, one is here, which directly connects to the blue wire, and then the other one connects to the other side. So, cable comes in here, 
the voltage will travel, or power should travel either through this way or through this way. But here's where the circuits basically cut, is this switch. So from what I can tell, this switch will physically disconnect the mains from the sewing machine. So there's no like phantom power running through as long as this switch is properly disconnected. That's very good. What I'll do is I'll bring this up to the camera. So hopefully you can get a good view of that. And now I will flip it upside down. So you can hopefully get a proper view of that. There. My intention later on is to use what I just there did there to try to draw a schematic of this. Um, I will have to figure out what these resistors are. And I'll try to do that now. up. Now this is set to about 264Ks. Resistor 1. Ten point eight K ohms resistor two five point five six K ohms resistor three a hundred and a hundred and eleven ohms hundred and twelve what about resistor 4? 118, 119, simply going up to like 120 ish ohms. Now the switch on here is labeled as mains 240 volt at half an amp. And I can't tell 125 volt. Now this, the blue capacitor in front here. Let's see what I can get off of this. Zero point one UF. 275 volts. It's an X with a capital X with a lowercase 2. Probably means it's some sort of suppression or protection. Um, 40, 100, 21 C. So you've got 40, then you have dash, sorry, backslash 100, backslash 21, backslash C. Can I bring that into view up here? Hopefully that was visible. Now this other one, um, CBB62, it's also a capital X with a lowercase 2, 275 volts, 68NF. So it looks like it's just a secondary safety capacitor. All right. And a one mega ohm, um, what's that called? One mega ohm service mount resistor. Right. Let's see if I can figure out what resistance this capacitor, this resistor is. So 
So the pins should be here and here. All right. So the resistor. Two hundred and sixty three point two kilo ohms. Hmm. I can't tell what the right rating for that VR1 is supposed to be. Oh, it's a 500k pot. It's written here on the side. So it's got written on the side B500k-4. Don't need to worry about that anymore. screw back on BT138 PH600E finally it's J uh, sorry PJS 025 and I'm saying that's a D that's this device here that really should be held in place and not free floating because damn. Now, what I will intend to do is to somehow disconnect, uh, probably desolder these two capacitors at some point or solder it so I've got one wire running from the switch and the other one wire running to here so there's just that closed circuit. Removing these capacitors would also be a safe idea because my intention is to use this not as a something to measure resistance which I'll probably have to take this out or probably even just better taking this out and what this will do is allow me to have an on off uh, foot pedal. All right, this has been made safe and hopefully usable for what I want. side this can get thrown out all right now for stage two. Oh, and I will be keeping this cable here pretty much it's lamp cable cord I could also use it on another sewing machine but at this point I just don't know I really just don't know still something not to get rid of all right. Now I need to figure out which is the active and which is the neutral, but I probably won't be able to do that because I'm going to act stupid. So with that said, I need to figure out what does what again. So I'm going to draw Australian outlet looks like and then I'm going to draw the three circles so this is the sewing machine foot uh, the sewing machine power cord and foot pedal I'm going to turn this back on I'm going to set it to connectivity mode Good. 
So, this, what does it connect to? All right, so this side directly connects to the circle. Does it connect to this side? No. The middle one. Does it connect there? No. Does it connect there? Yes. What about 2.5 ohms? What about here? No connection. All right. So you connect down here. And if I stick these in two together like this, and stick this to Ohm's reading, So these two these two connect to the foot pedal these two don't this one doesn't how that's wide in the machine uh, still a headache for me so I turn that off put it up here then I take this one and I say goodbye, EU. Wait, is this EU or? Hmm. Now, I need these and I need this. So I will say this again from my last video, if you haven't seen it, uh, this is dangerous. What I'm doing is highly, you can kill people with it, you can kill yourself with it by, now accidentally, people could die. However, I'm doing this for myself. This is also for educational purposes only. I'm putting this warning in now, and I'll try to put it also in at the beginning. That doesn't want to come out, does it? bother. All right, so I had to pause this thing to redo the, but like I said, bad video, um, don't follow. Now, what I need to do is to take this and to figure out what goes where. So first off, I need 50 millimeters, which is five centimeters. So the knockoff's about here. half a centimeter again, just over. Oh, this is way better. <laughs> Thank you. 
sorry, it's just the last time I did this sort of thing. Uh, it was an utter headache. So 50 millimeters. That is a little short. There we go. So, first off we need to figure out where we're cabling things up to. We know from the good, the original um, foot pedal, is that pin one over here conducts with what I the first one. So stick that here, and we'll test blue, brown, no. So one equals blue and two equals brown B so that means that brown uh, blue should connect to the first one so I will how is these wired up So blue should be the, brown is the active, so neutral. So this is switching the neutral one, right. So comes in, down, around. Goes in there first. feeling that's not going to be long enough. You're kidding, I screwed up. I just horribly screwed up. First, you go on, then you go on. All right, so as I was doing before, blue is neutral, which goes here. Okay, so I feel comfortable making that a little longer. Yeah, I'm going to do that, make it that long. So just a smidge longer. So blue goes to the neutral which is what I think it is 
Oh yeah, that's way better. I'm more happy with that. I'm not happy about that. Oh, damn it, it's still popped out. It's starting to look a little mangled. That's not good. All right, so this is the one that I'm doing. Push it in. Yep, probably going to have a lot of people screaming at me about that. So now the brown should go around, up and down and in. So I'll make that go, curve the tip of it like that. you're going to give me trouble, aren't you? I'm not happy about that. Ooh. That was a lot better. Just add a smidge. on now by right that should still remain yep okay um, now let's test this out so pin one focused on me should be here Pin two, focused on me, should go here. That shouldn't touch, that shouldn't be linked.
Good. I feel happy about myself now. Oh yeah, this was such a bitch last time. Okay, that's always a pain in the ass to get on. Every time I see one of these like rewired ports, it drives me insane. Because occasionally you'll see um, this black bit here where the sheath ends, the black sheath, you'll see it poking out the end. That, that's not appropriate at all. That's just downright stupid. All right, so that's definitely not on straight. All right, so what I would do Yeah, no, that's still giving it a bit of um, loosey-goosey. Yeah. I really should have put some heat shrink on this thing to hold it better in place. But that might be something I do later on. I think I might need to rewire this at some point soon. Now, this earth pin will not have any effect on uh, the machine or the operations. Usually sewing machines are what's referred to as double insulated. So generally these two should not come in contact at all. These two pins, the active and neutral. But yeah, this um, I feel much safer about utilizing with a sewing machine. Although Really, I probably should have redone the, the two with how much I've moved it around. I did crush the... Is that the active? So what's active? Brown is active. Yep. Now, I did try to pull out the earth pin, but it seems like these aren't designed to just be wiggled around, which means they're probably melted in around the port here. Anyway, that's what I wanted to do to that. So that's... Uh, this is now I'm sort of happy about. Like I said, I still want to turn around and have some put some extra meat on here so this doesn't move around as freely. But that has been set up. Oi, my heart is pounding. Oi, my heart is pounding. Um if you're wondering why I went with this particular brand, now there is another brand called Delta that make uh, that make these sort of plugs in the supermarket. I'll be honest, I've always preferred this company. It's one I've seen around since I was a child. Uh, I've never had any problems with it. I've never seen any real major problems outside of like normal defects or stuff you'd expect with failure. I, I, I don't have... I haven't really played around with Delta that much. Um, I barely do, but I'd see them mostly as competent, but I just simply prefer this brand. So if you're gonna go do this yourself, I highly recommend you don't. But then again, I got this from like the local hardware store, so you know, meh. Oh, when I went in there to go buy this, right? Uh, <laughs> I, 
was looking around, found them. They were like uh, ten dollars each, and I'm thinking, what the bloody hell? Ten dollars? Freak out! It's like, oh, you know, maybe I should get this one. And then I looked closer, and it's like fifteen amps, and I'm like, oh, I don't need fifteen amps. I don't have a fifteen amp plug. I need to find a better one. I need to find the ten amp. So more freaking out searching and poof there it is and i'm like sweet take it home and here i am sort of panicking because i just did something that is highly highly dangerous that can be problematic and i would definitely have uh, you know because I don't see, um, usually they're clear like this. Usually they're brown color. Um, I have seen, especially at work, a lot of power cords that have been done in this sort of fashion, where they are all loosey-goosey, and they do seem to pull out to a certain point. And that's what I was trying to avoid, of having the exposed sheath sitting like here, and these two inner cores floating around. Um, bit of a tip when you do go to unplug an appliance always grab it by here don't pull it by the cable you pull it by the cable you're gonna put stress on the cable that's gonna cause internal breakings and that's when you can get the, uh, the your your electrical cabling turning into a heater and then causing fires melting and overall sort of bad times Yeah, another thing I'm glad about is that these are copper cabling and they're not made of, for the life of me, um, aluminium. If this was aluminium cable on the, on the inside, I would have just gone, nah, I, I can't use this. This being difficult to get replacements for. So for instance, some of the older sewing machines I have, the Janome sewing machine I have, this part is serviceable, this plug. On this one, it is not. If the cable on here fails, um, so an example, if it fails between, I'd say a good 20 centimeters to, um, how long is this anyway? I would say it's about a meter. So anywhere below half a meter, um, I would be, competent, I would feel competent about putting a new plug on the end. Anything less than that? Uh, no. No, I would definitely not. If it fails between the sewing machine foot and this plug, though the foot pedal and this plug, yeah, you just have to toss the whole thing out. You can keep the foot pedal, and if you're able to obtain a suitable cable for it, by all means, but in general, no, this is, I'm not 100% happy with the job I did with this. I really am not. I wouldn't do this with a customer. I would, now that I know this, uh, I would definitely put a couple of layers of thermal um, heat shrink on the end and use that to build it up so that it does get a, a proper grip. Okay. Um, I'm already half, a, half an hour over this, so it's, it's going to go with the sewing machine that it works with. As for the original problem, what I learned about sewing machine uh, feet is like this one here. The YouTube link I linked in my other video showed that there was a ceramic, and I believe said carbon resistor, which would be something similar in this model and that would give you the, uh, actually how on earth would you open this? That would give you the speed control. Whereas the other one, it appears to use a MOSFET type device and that would provide the proper voltage to the motor for the speed control. As for this one, it uses, like I said before, a resistor. What kind, I don't know getting uh, obtaining the right resistor would require a bit of mathematics and locating the actual component whether or not that's possible i'm going to say it's highly unlikely 
However, the video I did see does show some hope that these can be restored. And that is something I would love to be able to do. This part pisses me off to no end since if it goes, if this goes, the foot pedal's junk. In my opinion, all of that, also in my opinion, the modern ones that I have, uh, the ones I got from online, and the ones that I was tearing apart and mucking around with today and previous video, if properly documented, um, if the circuitry was more up to Western standards versus whatever China decides to throw out, um, I would feel very comfortable. I did notice during the trial that the sewing machine that I hooked these up to, the Singer 3014, was operating way better. I mean, it sounded like it wasn't struggling. It had more of a smooth sort of trigger to it. Where when I'm using this foot pedal, it does seem to struggle a little bit. So that surprised me, but it does, it does show me that these new foot pedals are worth trying, but you need to make sure that you properly document the internals. Actually, I didn't do that with the second one. So, I'll crack this one open now. Now, the method I thought about, which I would have done on this one because I've already opened it, uh, and the other one, is that you want to tackle it from the actual joint. And be careful not to damage the wire or break the outer casing. All right, definitely don't tackle it from here. Like go back a little bit and then sort of pry it open. All right. So what do we got in here? So this is the bottom side of the PCB. This is the top side of the PCB. And there is nothing telling me what this resistor is. However, we've got two prongs here and we've got one prong up here. So let's try to measure it from here. So these two pins, what do they measure? Almost nothing. What about up here? Zero ohms. bouncing around everywhere. So what about 50%? And looking at this, there seems to be some sort of residue on here which probably needs to be cleaned up. Let's see what happens when I go from here to here. 170. A few mega ohms. I want to bet that this is also a 500k pot, but I'm not going to guess that. I'm highly disappointed that I can't tell what kind. I have trouble identifying this diode. So this capacitor here is a 1x 
0.047 UF K310 40-110-120 there's a space and then 0120 this capacitor is labeled 104K 250V so 250 volts I found out what this 94V-0 is it's basically fire retardant So I'll bring this back up again so you can see the top of it. And then flip it over so you can see the bottom. There. All right, let's see if I can get a res reading on these resistors. Resistor one is coming up as 328 ohms. Resistor two 216 ohms the what's supposed to be variable resistor 998 ohms 999 so about 1k um, I'll try to show the transfer so there's that one there is that one Now, there's this cutout notch here, which seems to go here. I won't use that. I'm gonna say screw it and clean out this thing at the moment right now, because I've got it open and I don't wanna screw with this again. I hope that's nothing but flux residue. Man, that looks horrible. You know what makes this um, logic board really good for uh, reverse engineering? It's all right there. There's nothing hiding. And because it's isopropyl alcohol, basically pure, that should just evaporate away. All right. Um, as for the main part on here, I will try and get that into light. Yeah, that should do it. Man, that thing looks complicated. <laughs> I bet it's just some sort of cheap ass MOSFET that's made to look fancy. As for the diode, um, looks like there's some text on here. I see a symbol and a letter E. As for the other side, I don't see anything. All right, which means if it fails, um, let's take measurements of this thing right now. So stick this into diode mode. Nothing on this side. Nothing on this side. Stick it to resistance. And the other way around. Hmm. D1. 
one. Okay, well, let's try that again. So, seems to count up to forty K or four hundred K. I didn't clunk out. Man, I don't know enough about electronics. I know enough to be able to um, now see when that fails to replace it. Still, I would like it if this one had the switch. I would like it if this one had both uh, you know, two proper safety capacitors. Both those, uh, well, the other one had, well, the US one has two X2 capacitors, which are supposed to be mains like safety ones that stop like bad things from happening <laughs> this one however it doesn't so i can sit that back up there out of the way and i can reassemble this thing probably shouldn't hold it by the capacitor Probably get that in so it mates in properly. The only thing I like about this one is that it's. Is there a notch? No, there's no notch. The only thing I don't like about this one is that it's. Sorry, the only good thing about this particular PCB is that it's been glued in. Uh, this one doesn't use spade terminals like the other one. This one just has the wires soldered in. So really all depending on what you prefer with that. I would love to find out how you're supposed to separate this from here. Because damn. Anyway. That's the full sort of uh, story with that one hopefully. So push in on the side and pop. There we go. And I can put that one back. I can put this one over there as well. This has definitely helped with my future repairs of sewing machines. Uh, I do now know that it's better to buy the European or the Australian cable if I can get a hold of it by itself. Uh, this should sort of help with me completing this actually. So the way this cable, the way this would work is that coming off here, you would have the light which goes to a switch. Now I'm not sure which side the switch is going to be on, but it should be that one. Um, and that goes up here to power the light. Then these two would come off. And if I'm guessing correct, lamp, motor. And these two would go off and power the motor. I'm guessing, although really... It... See, I would think that it would be from here. But I digress. I'm going to close that off. Put that away. And this video has taken way longer than I had originally intended. Um, so I also did the cable wrong, I should have, should I, should I, you know what, I'm just going to stop. And I'm going to say yibbidi yibbidi.